Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. You may or may not have heard some of my sleep stories based in a very sleepy village. One is called The Sleepy Bookshop. Well, anyway, tonight's story is about another shop in that village, the Astronomer's Shop. And in tonight's story, we will meet the Astronomer, and he will welcome visitors to his shop and show them the universe through his magnificent telescopes and they might just gain a little bit of perspective and a deeper understanding of their own world and the worlds beyond. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now, which will take a few minutes before tonight's sleep story. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1, and as I do, Allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel the support of the bed beneath you, or the floor, and the earth beneath that. Really feel that support. See if you can soften a little more because of it. Really let go now. Nine. You are safe. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety tonight. A guide that will only take you to safe places. Places of curiosity and joy and peace and hope. But above all, safety. Eight, feel into your body now, anywhere that you're still holding, any tension, any pain, just notice it now. And see if that awareness can allow you to let go a little bit more. Seven. Peace lives within you. It is always there. It is not an occasional visitor. It is a constant friend. It's just waiting to be seen. Waiting to be felt. See if you can feel that peace tonight. Six. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. Whatever thoughts you have about what has been or what will be, 
They don't serve you now. See if you can witness them arrive. And then gently let them go. Don't fight them. Watch them drift away. Like clouds floating through a starlit sky. Five. This is your moment. This is your time. You deserve rest. We all do. Allow that fact to help you settle into this moment a little bit more now. Know that you deserve this time. Four. Perhaps allow a little gratitude now. Gratitude for the safety of the shelter you find yourself in. Gratitude for the simple things. Loved ones. Health. The opportunity of rest. Three. Begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see a very beautiful little village. A village in a land far, far away. Occupied by little wooden buildings under a starlit sky. It's summertime in the village, and there's a beautiful scent in the air, and a very calming, joyous atmosphere that only summer can bring. Begin to see the astronomer's shop with all of its beautiful telescopes and begin to see the soft, glowing light that comes from within, an inviting light welcoming anyone who wishes to visit. Two. Feel into your body one more time now. See if there's any tension remaining. Anything you're holding on to. Just continue to feel the support of the bed or floor beneath you. One. Completely letting go now. As I tell you, Tonight's sleep story. In the village of sleep, 
nestled under the vast expanse of a starlit sky. A very old shop, known as the Astronomer's Shop, stands quietly and humbly. You may have visited this village before. It's the same village where the bookshop of sleep is. In fact, it's just around the corner, on the right. And as you might know, it normally rains in this village. But tonight, the sky is clear, and the stars are shining down. It's a perfect night for stargazing. Above the astronomer's shop is a wooden sign etched with the image of a telescope pointing towards the stars. It creaks gently in the nightly breeze. It is painted a deep midnight blue and the shop almost disappears into the twilight. Except, of course, for the warm glow of light spilling from its windows. It's an inviting light that offers comfort and peace and, of course, the possibility of exploring space from the safety of this cozy little shop. Inside, the shop is unlike anything you've ever seen. Row upon row of antique telescopes, each one with its own story. These range from brass pocket telescopes that fit in the palm of a hand to grand, towering contraptions of polished wood and gleaming lenses. The air is thick with the scent of old books and metal polish the shop's owner, an elderly astronomer named Elias, moves through his shop with a deep familiarity. For many, many decades, he has run his shop, day in, day out, but more importantly, night in and night out. No one, in fact, remembers when Elias opened the shop. Some speculate that he has always been here, that there is something magical about the astronomer's shop. And anyone who has ever visited it would say there is. Elias wears a well-worn vest over his shirt. His pockets are bulging with lens cloths and tiny tools, essential for his daily routines. Each telescope receives his careful attention from the precise adjustment of a lens to the gentle wiping of a tiny speck of dust. Elias knows every curve and corner of his instruments and he treats them like old friends friends that give him an eye into other worlds. He is an elegant looking man, 
tall with grey hair, and he wears little circular glasses at the end of his nose. He has kind eyes, and kindness lives within him. He looks forward to welcoming people and letting them gain perspective and understanding about themselves and the world around them. Not just the world that we live in, but the world beyond that. As the evening unfolds, Elias is preparing to welcome his customers. Most tend to come in the night time, because, well, they want to test the telescopes, and Elias has the perfect place to do that, but more about that later. He tends to each telescope with meticulous care. He polishes the brass fittings until they gleam under the shop's low lights. And he carefully adjusts the focus knobs, ensuring that each piece is ready to reveal the wonders of the universe. His hands, though aged and lined, are steady and sure. He has spent so many hours, so many days, so many years that he could do this work with his eyes closed. And in fact, he sometimes does. In the back of the shop, a narrow staircase spirals up to a small observatory which sits atop the roof. Here is the real magic of the astronomer's shop. Here is where everything comes to life under the night sky. This is where Elias shares his passion with others guiding them to gaze through the telescopes at the great celestial show above. The observatory sits like a crown atop the humble shop, and it awaits the night's first visitors. And then, as twilight deepens into night, the first visitor of the evening steps into the warm glow of the astronomer's shop. He is a middle-aged man with thoughtful eyes and a demeanor that speaks of deep contemplation. He's a visitor to the sleepy village and was on his way to the bookshop of sleep when he spotted the astronomer's shop His clothes are simple, a plain sweater, and worn old trousers. 
but his posture suggests a man who carries many questions about the world and his place in it. Elias greets him with a warm nod and a knowing smile, and he senses the visitor's search for some deeper understanding. Not many words pass between them, and he leads him up the narrow, creaking staircase to the observatory that crowns the shop. As they ascend, surrounded by star maps and framed pictures of galaxies and nebulae, the air grows cooler and the anticipation builds. At the top, Elias guides the man to the largest telescope, a magnificent object with a wide aperture that gazes out towards the heavens. As the visitor peers through the telescope, Elias begins to talk. Did you ever wonder how small we are in relation to everything else around us? You know they've recently discovered exoplanets, planets beyond our solar system. These have really shifted our understanding of the cosmos and our very existence within it. The man listens, his eyes reflecting the starlight. Each of us is like a star, seemingly small and insignificant, yet we're all part of a grander design. Knowing the cosmos helps us understand that while our time and space might be limited, our ability to wonder and learn is boundless. As Elias talks, the visitor's perspective is offered the opportunity of stretching beyond the immediate concerns of daily life. He feels grounded here. His gaze into the depths of space, guided by Elias's thoughtful narration, provides the visitor with a moment of clarity and peace, as if the stars themselves offer answers to his unspoken questions. The man peers once more through the telescope. His focus now aligns with the majestic view of Jupiter, the biggest planet in our solar system colossal and striped with swirling clouds of white, red, and ochre. 
the man can see the great red spot, which is in fact a giant storm larger than the earth itself. Elias stands behind him, enjoying the fact that the man is in such awe. Jupiter, he begins softly, has been watched by astronomers for centuries. Its presence in the sky has guided countless studies and inspired the dreams of explorers and scientists. He then adjusts the telescope slightly, bringing Jupiter's four largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto into view. These Galilean moons, they're called Galilean moons because they were first discovered by Galileo. They further revolutionized humanity's understanding of the solar system. As you look at Jupiter and its moons, consider how this view challenges our perspective. These moons orbit Jupiter as our own moon orbits Earth. A reminder that our planet is not the center of everything, but just another part of a very big story. The visitor watches captivated by the dance of the moons around the giant planet, each in its own precise gravitational choreography. This celestial sight coupled with Elias's gentle narration, reinforces a sense of scale and wonder. It's a vivid illustration that while the universe is immense and complex, each part of it is connected. This realization provides the visitor with a profound comfort and a new way to see his place in the grand scheme of things. The visitor feels like he's found more peace, more understanding of his place, and he's feeling tired. And so, he asks Elias for directions to the bookshop of sleep. Elias points him in the right way and he bids the astronomer good night, thanking him for the gift that he has offered. Elias now settles back into the quiet peace of his shop. The atmosphere is serene, 
and the air carries the faint scent of metal polish and aged wood. Elias moves towards a shelf lined with well-worn leather-bound books, each one a reservoir of knowledge and tales of the cosmos. He selects a thick tome, the gold lettering on the spine, reading Celestial Mechanics and the Poetry of the Stars by Edwin Stargazer, published a long time ago. This book which is one of his favorites, bridges the gap between the scientific and the philosophical aspects of astronomy. Elias opens the book to a marked page and begins to read out loud, softly, to himself, in contemplating the heavens, one must not merely look to the mechanics by which celestial bodies move, but seek the poetry that exists within the cosmos. It is in the dance of the planets and the flicker of the stars that we see the universe composing its silent verses. The stars, each one a beacon of ancient light, Tell us stories older than the mountains. The journey through the heavens is akin to a voyage across an uncharted ocean. Each constellation a waypoint. Each planet a landmark in the vast celestial sea. Just as the mariner uses the stars to navigate the endless waters, so too must the astronomer learn to chart a course through the eons guided by the fixed and the wandering stars. As we peer through the telescope, the glass lens becomes our portal to the distant past. Light, traveling unimaginable distances, reaches us after centuries or even thousands of years. To observe the stars is thus to look back in time, to witness the echoes of the universe's fiery birth. Here lies the profound truth. In observing, we are not merely spectators, but travelers in time itself. Consider the moon, our closest celestial neighbor and constant companion in the night sky. 
its surface, scarred by the ballet of celestial forces, shows us a dynamic and ever-changing place. The craters, the plains, and the mountains of the moon tell tales of cosmic impacts and geological upheavals. Just then, the second visitor of the night enters the store, and Elias puts down his book. She is a young woman with a thoughtful expression. Her eyes are wide with the anticipation of discovering something greater beyond the everyday. Her steps are quiet, almost hesitant, as if she's stepping into a sacred space. And in a way, she is. Elias welcomes her with a warm, understanding smile. He senses her need for peace. And perhaps answers to the deeper questions that trouble her. She looks around the cozy, dimly lit shop, and Elias invites her to the observatory where the night sky awaits. They climb up the winding staircase, and as they reach the top, Elias directs her to a beautiful telescope, now aimed at the vibrant planet Mars. The girl has never looked through a telescope, and so she needs to be shown what to do. And once Elias has shown her, and she places her eye to the telescope, she can't quite believe what she is witnessing. Mars, with its rusty hues, and distant icy poles. A silent, desert world, millions of miles away, yet almost close enough to touch through the lens. Mars, Elias begins, reminds us of the relentless passage of time and the universe's indifference to human affairs. Yet, it also symbolizes our curiosity, our drive to reach further to explore beyond our confines. He then shifts the telescope slightly, bringing Saturn into view. The planet's majestic rings cast a spell on the visitor. Saturn Elias says, shows us that there's more to reality than meets the eye. 
its rings, composed of countless ice and rock particles, each orbiting in its own course, remind us of the complexity and order that can exist even in chaos. Finally, Elias adjusts the telescope to point at the moon, Earth's constant companion, and as the craters, plains, and shadows of the moon's surface come into sharp relief, the visitor is struck by the serene silence, a silence she can almost hear through the telescope. Our moon, says Elias, reflects the light of the sun just as we reflect what we learn and feel. It teaches us about the impact of small things and the beauty of calm reflection. The young woman gazes at the moon and as she does, she takes some deep breaths. She is deeply moved by its quiet grace. The sight, coupled with Elias's words, instills in her a deep sense of connection to the worlds beyond our own. She finds grounding here. Her problems, significant as they may feel, are but tiny flickers against the vast, ancient backdrop of space. The young woman bids Elias good night, and the old astronomer now decides to do a little maintenance on a very old telescope, a brass telescope that has been a part of his collection for decades. Its once shiny surface is now dulled with the patina of time and it requires a careful hand to restore its function and luster. He places the telescope on a large, sturdy table, covered with a soft cloth to protect the delicate instrument. He begins by carefully disassembling the telescope, separating the eyepiece, the focus mechanism, and the main tube. As he works, Elias uses a small, fine brush to remove any dust and debris 
that have accumulated inside the tube. This ensures that nothing obstructs the path of light. Next, he applies a small amount of special polish to a soft cloth and gently buffs the brass components. The circular motions are methodical and soothing. Each rub restoring a bit of the telescope's original shine. Once the body of the telescope is clean, Elias turns his attention to the lenses. He carefully unscrews the retaining rings, lifts out the delicate glass pieces, and inspects them against the light for any signs of scratches or imperfections. Using a specialized lens cleaner, he sprays a fine mist onto each lens before wiping them. He handles each piece with the utmost care aware that these lenses are the eyes through which the universe reveals itself. Reassembling the telescope, Elias makes sure every component fits perfectly back into place. He adjusts the focus mechanism, testing it to ensure a smooth, precise movement that will allow for optimal viewing of the stars. With the telescope now pristine and fully functional, he looks out the window at the night sky and feels deep gratitude for this moment. Then, the bell above the door chimes softly as the third and final visitor of the night enters the astronomer's shop. He is an older gentleman, his hair silvered with age, and his eyes reflect a deep, enduring fascination with the world around him. His steps are deliberate, echoing softly in the quiet shop as he approaches Elias with a respectful nod. Elias, sensing the reflective nature of the man, invites him to ascend to the observatory. Before they reach the narrow staircase, however, Elias pauses and places a gentle hand on the man's shoulder. Before we look to the stars, he suggests, 
take a moment to look around at our own world. Observe the beauty of this planet, our home. It's as marvelous a creation as any star or galaxy in the cosmos. And so he leads the man to a window first, pointing out the gentle sway of trees in the night breeze, the silhouette of the distant mountains under the moonlight, and the soft rustle of wildlife in the dark. All this, Elias continues, is part of that vast universe. We are aboard a natural spaceship, Earth, traveling through space, just as surely as any other planet. Imagine arriving here for the first time and seeing a tree or a mountain or any of our beautiful creatures. You would be amazed. These words really sink in with the visitor. And now they proceed to the observatory. As he gazes through the telescope, the one that Elias has just cleaned, the visitor first observes the moon its craters and plains, stark and beautiful, against the backdrop of infinite space. He then shifts to view the distant twinkling of stars, clusters of galaxies, and far, far away worlds. Reflecting on Elias's earlier words, the man realizes that while he stands on Earth, looking out, there might just be Somewhere, out there, in the vastness, another planet of beings, looking back towards Earth, pondering similar thoughts about their place in the universe. Every look through a telescope is a two-way mirror, Elias says softly. It reflects our curiosity outward into the universe and brings the universe's mystery back to us. The visitor steps away from the telescope, deeply moved. He thanks Elias, feeling a kinship, not only with the wider universe, but with our planet, and also 
with this wise old astronomer who has guided him to see both the outer world and his inner self with new eyes and with a final nod and a warm smile Elias bids his last visitor of the night goodbye the bell chimes gently as the door closes behind the departing guest and the quiet of the night reclaims the shop. Elias then begins his routine of closing up for the evening a process as familiar and comforting as an old song. Satisfied that everything is in order, Elias locks the front door of the shop and then ascends a different set of stairs that lead to his private quarters above the shop. In his living space, the ambience is cozy, and Elias's bedtime routine is pretty simple, and it isn't long before he is climbing into bed. He lies back against his pillows and draws a deep, contented breath above him through the skylight. The stars twinkle, and his eyes trace the familiar constellations, each one an old friend he's known for many years. And as his eyelids grow heavy, his mind wanders through the cosmos adrift in thoughts of nebulae, distant galaxies, but most importantly, the beauty and comfort of our home, the home he goes to sleep in now. <laughs>